Hi, this is Edison Abelard, and in this video, we're going to discuss how do you add force to an object in Unity 3D. Now, if you remember, in a previous video, we added gravity by adding a rigid body to an object. But this time, we're going to add force based on your collision. Now, we're just going to begin with a new scene. Same as always, we're just going to create a nice plane. Scale it up. We're going to actually delete our camera because our character controller will come with its own camera. We're going to create a directional light. Just rotate it a little bit. Now I'm using shortcuts instead of using the keys and so using instead of going through the menus. But whenever I do remember, I'll better yet give you the shortcuts now. W is to get the move tool. R is to rotate and you have the different axis you can rotate. Oops, W is to move, E is to rotate, R is to scale. Some of this stuff is just natural so I don't actually remember the keys I'm pressing, I just know I want to do it. So anyways, we're going to create that, create other, we're going to create a cube same W just move it over give us a platform to hit and now I'm going to duplicate it but in a later video I'll explain to you why there's actually a better method than duplicating uh, I think we're rotating this on no yep I don't know why same thing duplicate again and all I'm trying to do is just give myself just a little box to play in. Make sure everything is good. All right. Now we're going to add a first person controller. Just drop it onto the scene. Now I did get a question about this this week about how come my character is falling through this. Um, it's still falling although I added um, him into the scene. I'm going to hit play and you'll notice that I'm falling right away. The reason why I'm falling is is because if you notice we're actually both on and off this platform really what's happening is we're already intersecting before it begins so collision detection is actually happening at the bottom and not in between if we wanted to script in a game if we do you know fall below this platform to automatically you know reset the character back up here we could but by default it doesn't so just bring it up a little bit hit play and you'll fall on top of the surface anyways um, as you can see just this collision detection on the sides I'm just gonna add a little bit something different I'm going to edit render settings we're gonna come here to skybox click on that just start typing in sky and I'm going to change our sky hit play and boom, now we have a better scenery than just that nasty blue solid. All right, I'll go into detail later on about skyboxes and, and how to create your own skybox. Though this is very nice, I would hate to see every game or every interactive experience consist of the same sky. So, all right, so now let's, let's get into the meat of what we're really trying to do here. We're going to create another game object. We're going to carry a sphere. <clears throat> bring that above and same as before if we hit play here goes our sphere it's just standing up there we're going to grab it again if you remember physics rigid body now it has all the physics data it needs we hit play and it fell somewhere there it is um, where am I facing oh that's why I'm facing that direction there you go. Now now when I hit play, you should see it right away. Okay, so I'm just going to hit play and I'm going to walk into the object. As you can see, nothing happens. What we're going to do now is go ahead and just create a JavaScript file. And we're going to call it force. 
right away you'll notice that there's a function that's automatically created and it's called update for all of oh man I already have the code in here <laughs> all right so this is I'm just gonna actually delete this better yet you didn't see that <laughs> um, I was actually working on like I said this is gonna be out of out of sequence so I was actually working on something else um, when this was added all right so basically the function update function oops function update happens on every frame so if we were to do debug dot log um, just hit high we save it now in order for this to actually work you have to add it to our player um, so what we'll do is, is just grab it grab the force now and just left click and drag it right on top it's gonna tell us to you know do we want to get rid of the def um, oops do we want to get rid of the prefab that's absolutely fine we'll hit play and you will see it just says hi now it looks like I just said hi but that's not the case every frame it says hi so if you don't need it please don't use it um, we'll go in later into detail about when you actually need to have the update function and sometimes you can get away with using other functions not just the update but we'll go back into force and we'll get rid of this and the first thing we'll do is, is create a variable called speed and we're going to data type it as an integer with a default value of five we're going to create a function called on collider nope on controller collider hit which accepts one parameter and this is how we're going to tell what we're hitting um, controller there you go controller collider hit now we're going to start off by just debugging debug dot log we hit an object just to show you what happens hit play and you notice right away we hit an object now why is that well if you remember this has a collider this has a collider this has a collider so we're checking to see if you collide with any of these objects. So in order to specify which objects, we can do a few things. We can go by name or we can go by tag. Now in this instance, I'm actually going to go by tag. And the reason for that is, is we can have a whole bunch of objects with the same tag and add that script to function with all those objects. So the way you create a new tag, is as you come here you grab the op you click on the object in our case is this sphere we're going to add tag and now right now there's two this box which was what I was using before but you can change the size if there isn't enough by just simply updating this integer now we have eight we'll just leave it down to two we'll add ball now we go back click on the object we have ball in this menu now click on ball go back to our script and now instead of debugging at this time we're going to first check if and once again I'm definitely going to go over some of this information in a lot more detail what a function is and how to use it and what the if statement is in later videos so basically we're going to check this hit object hit dot game object dot tag is equal to ball if now you see down here we don't have I don't want to <laughs> make anyone nauseous but down here we don't have um, our, our trace statement coming out anymore or a log statement in this case but once I hit the ball you'll see we hit an object I'm just gonna stop that real quick Double click, we hit an object. So we hit it a few times. Clear that. Now, 
the fun begins. Let's go back. Now that we know we can hit an object, we're going to come here and quickly remember we know that we're hitting this specific object. So we're going to just do hit dot um, rigid body because that's where our information is. Add, getting easier, force. Now this accepts one parameter, it really is the force um, and the direction. But what we're going to do is, is use, because we wanted to move based off of ourselves, transform dot forward, which is just my forward direction, times speed. Nothing happens. Ha <laughs> ha. Perfect. So now our object is actually moving. We'll roll this thing as slow as possible. And boom, you notice it collided with the wall. And that's really how you add force. It's really that simple. So now you'll notice I actually multiplied by speed. If I bring this up again, we have a variable called speed. Now, if you notice, if we click on our first person controller, our force script has speed here. Now what happens is when you create a variable, you actually can change it in here and whatever you change in here will actually be pardon me um, will actually be um, replacing what you have within your script so right here our default is 5 so when we click on our first player controller our speed is set to 36 I'll set it back to 5 now this is the power of unity and partly the reason why I stopped making flash games <laughs> and went to 3d that's 5 I'm just going to go back and change this to 50. Real time. Oh, didn't really hit it. So it's moving a little faster. Okay, L let's try to change it to 100. Whoa, where's our ball at? Hope this doesn't get a little bit too awkward. Change that. Sorry. Change that to 50. So it definitely moves a lot faster than it did before. We can keep changing this, <clears throat> making this a lot more. Um, let's say, hmm, let's jump up to 500. Yeah, I don't like the ball when it's stuck in a corner. But as you can see, it's moving even faster. Okay, ball stuck in the corner again. Let's let's jump this up to two thousand. See we'll, see what kind of speed we get then. Boom. So, there goes how you add a force to an object. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you you don't have to use the transform. There are other ways to do it also, but I'll definitely go into in a little more in detail in another video because you can instead of going forward you can use vector 3 and if you wanted to say vector 3 and do um this is something awkward let's see if we can throw it to the left save it see what happens to the left so th there are other ways, other directions you can go. And as we go more into detail about the physics, um, we can arch the, the momentum. So it can be going forward and um, let's say it can go forward 50. It can, it can start off going up 100. And you remember this still has gravity attached to it. So it'll eventually come down. So, so there's a lot more we can actually do. That's the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to Mighty Maddie 76 posted a question and in this case respond with a video. So if you have questions and you don't know what to do, please by all means post a comment. I'll, I'll be more than happy to get to it as soon as possible. If you haven't done so already, please follow me on Twitter, E Abelard, or find me on Google Plus, E Abelard, or definitely check out our website, Passion47, to find out what else we do. Edison Abelard out.